The world of Red Dead Redemption 2 is filled with some sad stories. One of them is the main story, which is arguably pretty sad. But there are also some sad smaller stories dotted about in the open world space for us to find. So in today's video, we're headed to the lovely town of Valentine to experience one of these sad stories. The story of a lonely man named Mickey. Mickey can be found in a couple of spots in the town of Valentine, along the road out of town just next to the Valentine train station, or on the road outside of Keen's saloon on the eastern side of town. He can be identified by his tattered Union soldier outfit and the fact that he's missing his left arm, seemingly a Civil War veteran simply forgotten by the people around him. He presents dishevelled and appears to be homeless, and can be interacted with several times throughout the chapters of the game. He can be found begging for money from chapter 2 onwards, so let's begin and see what this lonely old fella has to say for himself. Give a fella a nickel! Hello, mister. Hey, buddy! I'm too old to get a job, mister. Way too old. Can't we be friends? <sighs> sure. I'm so happy. I ain't had a friend in a long time. Long, long time. My last friend died. It weren't my fault. They said it was, but they was wrong. It's fun being with you, mister. Can I hold you a second, mister? Can I? Okay, just quickly. That felt good. It's nice to be held sometimes. Oh, we used to hold each other in the war. You got sad eyes, mister. Like you've seen sad things. Remember with kindness. Oh. After this interaction, Mickey walks away. It seems like nobody has spoken to him in a while. Arthur communicating with him at all makes him so happy that he wants to hug Arthur, and allowing him to do so gains Arthur some honour. We've done a good deed. Mickey was happy that we spared him the time of day, and we learnt that maybe he's a little bit odd. Usually interactions with characters like this occur once per chapter, so if we return in chapter 3, we can learn more about the guy. Come on. Give a fella a nickel. Give me a dime. Give me something! Easy, easy. Hello, sir. Hey, brother! Hey, mister! Mister! I never learned your name. I never did. You're like a brother, but I didn't learn your name. And I said to myself, Mickey, you never learned that fella's name. Now, you'll never see him again, and you'll be sad. Like when your puppy passed, because you slept on it. What's your name, mister? Arthur. Arthur? My uncle's name was Arthur. Uncle Arthur, we called him, on account of his name. It's a fine name, a strong name, like a king. You could be my king, Mr. Arthur. Yes, you could. I just want to say that that is perhaps the most terrifying thing that a strange old man could say. Anyway, after this encounter, he immediately walked off to Keen's saloon, where he goes straight inside and cracks open a cold beverage. We do learn a lot about Mickey from what he says. He claims he once had a puppy that he slept on, so it died, and his speech patterns are quite awkward. He repeats a lot of what he says, almost like he's trying to play for time, considering he doesn't actually have very much to say. Again, it's obvious that this seeming former soldier is a very lonely man. And considering these details, I can't imagine his mental state is the healthiest that it's ever been or could be. Though this could also just be exaggerating to strum up sympathy, though... To some degree I doubt it, but it will all make sense later. And if people don't talk to him, as Mickey states, then maybe he really is quite lonely and that can do all sorts of damage. Also worth addressing before we continue, in the first encounter, if you allow Mickey to hug you, there is a rumour that he will pickpocket you. However, I could find no evidence that this is actually the case. I'd argue this is likely a myth, as if you do find yourself getting robbed in this game, the game makes it very clear that that has happened by telling you that a certain amount of money has 
been removed from your satchel, though he does seem to go to Keen's saloon and drop a lot of money on booze after every interaction, though this doesn't necessarily mean anything either, as this could just be him defaulting to a regular NPC routine after the interaction is complete, instead of just disappearing. Anyway, let's move on to our next interaction with Mr. Mickey. I would give you specifics as to when you can have these interactions in correlation to the last one, however I'm not overly certain that it is awfully specific. But for a change of scenery, this time I found him down by the train station. Hey, Mr. Mr. Arthur! Why are you always so mad? You're crazy! All that shooting! Then they said I was crazy. I'm not crazy, not like you! You beat up the big fella! He wants to beat me up. I asked for it. You think you're real crazy, mister? I'm talking to you, so I must be crazy. I fought in a war, mister. I did. Sent me strange seeing all them fellas die. Which war was that exactly? A bad one, Mr. Arthur. Oh, a real bad. There's good wars? Uh, I... I saw terrible things. I ain't been the same since. Uh, I get... I get... funny. I'll go now. Don't act crazy now. He claims that he once got beaten up by Tommy, who's the big character we beat up in Chapter 2 at the Valentine Saloon, which may suggest that the people of Valentine perhaps perceive Mickey as something of a nuisance, hence why, as he claims, people don't really speak with him, and hence why he allegedly got beaten up by Tommy at one point, who has proven that he's more than eager to escalate a fight if there is one, despite being told to not get involved, which suggests he has a history of getting involved in things that aren't his business, so maybe Tommy caught wind of people discussing Mickey and decided to take matters into his own hands so to speak. It may also explain why Mickey now drinks at the other saloon in town. Mickey also advises Arthur to not go and act crazy. He also claims he fought in a war and when questioned on which war that was, he just simply responds with a bad one. Which is an interesting detail as it's unspecific and I can't imagine many veterans forgetting the wars they fought in. He quickly moves on to state that he's seen terrible things and hasn't been the same since. Though at one point this could be down to Mickey's forgetfulness, as at one point he seems to have forgotten Arthur's name and his own. Good to see you again, friend. I've only gone and forgotten your name. But worse than that, I've forgotten my own name too. It happens to me. You ever forget your name, mister? Sure. See? We're made for each other. I mean, as friends. I knew it! There's a big crazy fella with a gun, and I'm a little crazy fella. Can't afford a gun no more. Stick with him, Jimmy, I said. And then I, I said, your name ain't Jimmy, it's Mickey. And then the fella I was talking to in my head, even he didn't want to talk to me no more. I'll see you around. I've gotten real confused. Okay, then. Maybe this has some bearing, and I don't doubt that it does. However, there is more or less even to this Civil War veteran than it seems. If during Chapter 6, after Arthur is tragically diagnosed with tuberculosis, you pay him a visit provided you've already done so at least once in the past, you will have this interaction. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. Long time no see. You don't look so well, friend. No, not really. <coughs> oh, that's too bad, buddy. They told me I was dying, only I never did. You ever die, friend? Well, no. Of course not. Of course you didn't. But, well, we're all gonna die. I guess so. I'm sorry I always say dumb things. I'm a dumb fella. You're smart, and you're dying, and I'm dumb, and I ain't died yet, and, well, here's the thing. I never was in the army, friend. I told folk I was, but I lied. I don't know why I did. 
and now I feel better. But, well, here's another thing. You, well, you've always been, or you've mostly been nice to me. At least you spoke to me. And now you're dying. And I'm real sad. Real sad. Sure ain't fair. Ain't fair at all. I'll miss you, friend. Mickey reveals to us that he is in fact not actually a Civil War veteran, and it was in fact a facade to strum up sympathy amongst the locals of Valentine. It was a plausible charade, as troubled Civil War veterans were quite a common sight in isolated towns in the West in this time. However, it didn't seem to work too well as a disguise for Mickey, as the only person who's spoken to him in years properly has been Arthur Morgan. But it seems as if Mickey is genuinely saddened by the news that Arthur is unwell, hence why he's come clean with him. As a final encounter, Mickey can be encountered by John Marston in the epilogue, where he will seem to remember Arthur quite fondly, though he doesn't seem to remember his name, only the fact that he showed him kindness. Mister? Hey, buddy! Hey there, mister. Hey there. Mind if I join you? Mind if I... if I talk to you? Fellas sometimes mind, and sometimes they don't mind, and ain't no way of knowing. I don't mind. Oh, I like you. You're kind. I like kindness. I ain't so kind. Now, that ain't true. Ain't true at all. Most folk won't spare me the time of day. But you did. You did. And it was real nice. Real nice. Can I... Can I hold you, mister? Whoa. I'm... <laughs> I got a woman. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, mister. I didn't mean nothing by it. I just kind of like folk. But most folk don't like me. Ah, uh, no harm done. Ain't ever harmful to be held, mister. Only, most folk find me creepy and, and strange, uh, which ain't nice. I guess not. What's your name? John. Or, uh, Jim. You don't know? That's funny. <laughs> used to know a fella a bit like you a few years back crazy kind of fella but he had a heart on him what was his name i forget funny face alan or something i think he didn't like me much neither but he was okay i think he died they always do. The good ones. He weren't a good one. He was, well, he was good and bad, and it's hard to say quite what he was in the end. That's so. Sure. That's so. I can kind of see that. Well, it's been fun talking, mister. My name's Mickey. I think it's fair to say that the years have ravaged Mickey a fair bit, he's lost his hat, his hair is revealed, and it appears as if his hairline is receding so far that I think it could qualify as a tactical retreat. Now he still appears to be using the disguise of a Civil War veteran, though we know that is not what he was, which shows that he's not above still lying despite knowing that he's lied and admitting that to Arthur. Now he may be able to fake being a veteran, but I doubt he can fake having a missing arm. I mean, if he can, power to him for the dedication. I think it's probably likely that if he wasn't a soldier, maybe he was born without it, or he lost it in an accident at some point in his life and couldn't work as a result. Maybe finding the body of a Civil War soldier at some battlefield, and using that as a means to gain the sympathy of passers-by in hopes that they would give him some money. From there, I think it's easy to tell that he's definitely a very lonely man, probably not in the best of mental states, as shown. And in a way, despite the veteran lie, it's a very sad story. But that concludes today's video on Mickey, the one-armed veteran, 
of Valentine. Thank you all for watching this video, I really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be amazing. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, take care and goodbye.